Thank you very much for being with us. This Thank afternoon. you. I appreciate it. So first question I have for you, how have geographic information systems, has that technology changed over the last few years? Mm -hmm. This has been a technology that's been evolving for like 40 years, from mainframes to mini computers mm -hmm. to workstations, and then on to PCs with a lot of client server technology. In the last half a dozen years, it's taken another leap, and it's now just about ready to make the big one, which mm -hmm. is to move on the web. Mm -hmm. So the web becomes a platform for sharing and viewing and mashing up and integrating geographic data. And that platform means that, uh, well, actually, each of these stages, which I've personally witnessed, sure. <laughs> oddly enough, uh, has meant about an order of magnitude increase in the people that would use it. On mainframes, there was a few hundred people that were uh, doing it more as a research project. And PCs, there's actually millions of users. When it goes on the web, my own belief system is it will reach everybody. Huh. Uh, so it's more than an order of magnitude, it will be yeah. orders of magnitude. And geographic knowledge will become pervasive. People will use it in every way. And there's a reason for that, uh, I think, because we are wired in the back of our head geospatially. Uh -huh. You know, we navigate, we are visual, um, and some people are more right brain than others. But uh -huh. I think this notion that we can embed geographic logic and geographic thinking and geographic communication into everything on the web, certainly all that knowledge uh, is going to happen and then uh, I think it'll be useful for little farmers in Africa, uh -huh. you know, planting, getting the weather, getting the soils information because they know that stuff, mm -hmm. but they don't have it explicitly delivered to them in a dynamic way. So uh -huh. it's, it's going to be big in that regard. This is a big step for us. Mm. So how, how do these systems create transparency? Um, people understand maps. Mm. So they understand tables and spreadsheets too, but you know, the old idea of a picture is worth a thousand words. A map is worth a million words because you can look at it and it stimulates your eye brain reasoning and creates a kind of instant understanding. So in, we built the uh, website for the RAT board, uh, recovery.gov site, which has been fantastically successful. And as we've interviewed people, what they tell us is, uh, I can look at all the data about something, but when I see a dot mm -hmm. in my neighborhood, yeah. I instantly understand the context. I understand it's near the school or there's a bridge being, and maybe that was a good bridge or maybe it was a bridge to nowhere, sure. and they see it right away. Right. And they, they relate with all of their other experiential data, which is all geospatial, uh -huh. to the map. So the ability to take data and serve it on a map, or print it on a map, uh -huh. but serve it especially, and particularly in, in a dynamic way, is very stimulating to people. Right. So right now in the oil spill, for example, uh, lots of people are putting stuff on maps, and they see each other's experience. Um, you know, one citizen makes this crowdsourced observation, and then fish and wildlife, or you know, they show where all the sensitive areas are along the shore, and people are seeing the context of it all very quickly, and and they do it in an explicit way, and in a what I like to call quantitative or computational geography. Hmm. You know, it's beyond visualization; it's mm -hmm. it's looking at relationships and patterns and processes. It's basic science, actually, right. but delivered in this media that we can all get right, right away. Right. It doesn't, doesn't matter if it's a villager or sure. a sophisticated person, they just get it. So grabbing maps as an element of transparency in government, I think is much more valuable than uh, the data. So mm. data.gov is great, mm -hmm. but it's also becoming spatially literate. Mm. I mean, those guys are beginning to add maps to it, and that's much more powerful. Because, in fact, if I download the data, a few people can hack it up and work with it. Sure. But if I deliver map services with the data behind it mm. and with the option to get the data, the, it actually communicates to everybody. Right. So I, I think it's the next, frankly, it's the next step in open democracy, mm. being able to communicate public policy in such a way that people can actually see where we're going to spend money or where mm -hmm. we are spending money. And it unveils what uh, you know? What, what's actually going on in government? Right. So I, I love that idea that it's going to be it's going to evolve 
to uh, be the instrument of, of significant of significant progress in, in how citizens engage and communicate with their government. So how has the data itself changed over the last few years, or has it? Um, spatial data in a digital form is exponentially growing because we're because of sensor networks where we're measuring everything that changes. I mean, uh, I envision a world where virtually everything that changes or moves will be measured. Mm -hmm. and in my lifetime, I've seen it move from a very static situations where it's right. all coming alive. Right. And uh, you add that sensor network to synoptic measurements from satellites or aircraft where they're giving sort of uh, uh, real-time pictures, videos now going online of predator movements, so see, seeing it all. Mm -hmm. Persistent surveillance is what it's being called. I think that's all being wired up. It's all being geospatialized. Geospatial is the framework on which all these measurements are being organized and, mm -hmm. and visualized. So this isn't just another IT system. This mm -hmm. is a foundational system that uh, will bring all of our measurements together, both geospatial measurements, like measuring the geospatial things, but also using geospatial frameworks to realize and visualize all information. Most mm -hmm. information is actually geospatial. Money flows, where people live, uh, the money, the bank accounts, the transactions, all of it can be seen through maps. So it's a, it's another language. Sure. <laughs> it's right. like a language. Yeah, right. That's the point that makes it exciting for me. Now, are the tools to take advantage of these things, are, are they at a point where people with moderate technical skills can start take, start using them? It is a whole gamut mm. from very specialist tools that are high-end, you might call, or, uh, or difficult, more difficult to use to things that just show up on your screen and you can interact with it. Um, and, and people like Google and Microsoft and their consumer maps have sort of opened the world's eyes to the world of geospatial sure. by having a very simple platform that you can pan and zoom on maps. Um, what's happening at the high end is that it's getting much easier. Mm -hmm. And also they're adopting, adapting the map metaphor. Mm -hmm for hanging geographic intelligence behind it. So the six kinds of geographic knowledge are the data, of course, then how the data is organized in data models. You need to have some thinking to, to do that. And then spatial analytic models, like modeling processes like river flows uh -huh. or vegetation growth or urbanization growth. These are models, analytic models, quantitative uh, geography. And, and uh, yeah. And the map itself is a piece of knowledge that specialists create. So we have tools to build models, tools to build maps, tools to organize the data models, most of which people, normal people don't want to get engaged in. Mm -hmm. But what they do want to get engaged in is the map itself. Right. So uh, the next generation of technology that's happening really right now hides all of that specialist stuff mm -hmm. behind the map metaphor. So I can interact with a map. I can mark on a map, I can email my map to somebody else, and uh, I can combine maps, or right. I can run analytic models on maps, um, and I can do that easily using the map metaphor, uh -huh. like I could with consumer mapping, but I've got the rich stuff behind it. So to answer your question, uh, a big shift is happening this year in usability. Uh -huh. It's taking all of the geographic knowledge that we heretofore required specialists to have, and packaging it in a map simple form. And these maps are interesting because I can run them in a browser uh -huh. as a service from a server. I can run them in my cell phone, just like I can run consumer maps. I can uh, run them on a desktop and do high-end things. I can embed them inside of another app so I get maps inside my app. Sure, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, uh, and I can trade those maps and I can send those maps and I can communicate those maps. Uh -huh. This this next generation stage of usability means the map as a metaphor becomes a language. Right. And that's very exciting to me, actually. It's, um, it's the realization of, uh, of of an evolution that started with GIS for researchers to GIS for professionals to GIS for 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 uh, you know knowledge workers uh -huh. to GIS for everybody, right. and that's being facilitated in part by the changes in ease of use of the technology itself. Uh -huh. It was damn hard to work with the mainframe, right? And easier on a mini, but still right. troublesome on a PC. 
compared to the browser and PC world. And so how come it's happening now? How come we didn't design that 40 years ago? Right. You know, people ask me all that. Right, right. Be uh, <laughs> because Moore's Law, basically. Sure, right. I can, I can hide all the complexity, uh, you know, in the computational stack. Mm -hmm. I mean, iPhones are really complicated yeah. if you take them apart, but the the complexity is completely hidden mm -hmm. behind this uh, simple interface. Right. And uh, that's what we're doing in GIS now, uh, copying basically what the, the consumer mapping world has done. Mm -hmm. And that's, well, as you can tell, I'm yeah, excited that, that's, about Yeah, it, well, it is exciting. And <laughs> yeah. so the last question I have for you, you mentioned yeah. map is metaphor. You also mentioned that we're, we seem to be hardwired for, mm -hmm. for understanding yeah. these things. Why do you think that maps resonate with us so much? I, I think that uh, because they are, these are closely connected. Mm -hmm. The way our brains are, we are geospatial animals. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're thinking geospatially. Uh, we're doing comparative analysis. It's more expensive over there than here. Mm -hmm. uh, or it's uh, more beautiful there than here. Or that house in this neighborhood is better than that. Or this is a crime. We're, we're talking that in our language all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, a map expresses it very quickly. So we can look at it and I say, oh, now I have new understanding. Right. And uh, I think Saul Werman, uh, Richard Werman, who started the TED conference many uh -huh. years ago, once said, understanding is a uh, predecessor of action or something like that. I'm misquoting you. Sorry, Saul, if you're looking. <laughs> uh, but uh, maps create understanding. They're the, they're the foundation for action. Mm. Uh, often, mm -hmm. or uh, at least understanding uh, all by itself is interesting. So my field is landscape architecture. I like to design things. Mm -hmm. That's how I got into mapping. Um, so these first 40 years in this have all been about measuring, analyzing, modeling, computational geography, mm -hmm. to use that term again. Um, where I want to take this now is into geodesign, which is to use the map not only to describe and understand things, but then to design on it. Mm -hmm. So where should we locate this new factory? Mm -hmm. Considering all of the geographic knowledge, the wetlands, the, the opportunities economically, all of that should be backgrounding my design. Design should be guided by geographic knowledge. Um, and uh, who's a designer? Well. Mm -hmm. How about all of us? Sure. We all sort of design our little outfit. Yeah, right, right. We design where we live. We design our family. We design cities. We design developments. We design businesses. Uh, we design strategies. And geographic design is a new field. Mm. It'll be built on top of all of this geographic knowledge. It's a set of methods and tools that allow us to sketch and quickly consider the consequences of alternatives. Mm -hmm. so that we can, just like we navigate to work this way instead of that way, which is a kind of design problem, we'll design the future so it's sustainable, mm -hmm. uh, so that it in integrates all of the considerations that we need to. Uh, right now we're in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are in deep trouble. It's kind of like uh, ha having your... Uh, having some food on your face, you know, nobody tells you, <laughs> or it's the elephant in the room to sure. use that metaphor. We're in deep shit, actually. Yeah. We have got to do some rather dramatic things, and everybody's got to work on this together. But what I've chosen is uh, I want to use geography and this concept of geodesign and make it pervasive so people start to make decisions that are guided based on geographic knowledge. Everything that we're measuring, uh -huh. you know, it's, it's not enough to actually measure change or uh, to talk about you know that the world is going to help uh -huh. uh, to tell stories about global warming it isn't enough uh -huh. we've got to actually bring that knowledge into action and uh, I think this the meaning of all this GIS platform that's being built is not just to make cool maps or hack around or play uh -huh. no I think it ultimately is wired into our destiny uh, it's the realization of a new kind of collaborative or group knowledge uh -huh. about the planet that we live on. Um, and uh, putting in the hands of everybody that knowledge, and then putting in the hands of everybody design tools that let them design in 
in consideration of all that knowledge mm -hmm. is, I think, is, is, I think, an important step in human evolution. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking You're the welcome. time. I really appreciate it. No, I'm nice. That's it for now from the Gov 2.0 Expo. Tune in a little bit later as we'll have more live interviews.